I guess no man will ever be Dan'l. I guess no man will ever be Dan'l, ever be Dan'l Boone. Come vacation time each year, a good many of us welcome the chance to get away from it all, to head for the wide open spaces. It's kind of fun to get out and rough it, so long as we can take along all of the comforts of home. But now turn your thoughts back to nearly two centuries ago, to a time when travel was a test of endurance and courage, when it required a little bit of luck, even for survival. In September, 1773, Daniel Boone, with his family and some 20 of his neighbors, headed west toward an earthly paradise called Kentuck. But it wasn't just a vacation jaunt, and they knew in advance what they would be up against. Now, under such conditions, why would people leave their comfortable homes, head off into a wild and primitive land? Well, each had a reason of his own, and I can tell you this, if it were not for such people, it would have remained wild and primitive and unexplored. And our country never could have grown as it did. Now it is their story you're about to see, titled, The Wilderness Road. Come all you fine brave neighbors who have a mind to go To settle in Kentucky and chase the buffalo in some far distant country, your fortune there to grow. We lay us down upon the banks of the blessed Ohio. Daniel! Martha calling, Pa! What is it, Rebecca? Somebody's coming! Young bucks out on the light, probably. Uh, there's not much traveling time left. We'll make camp over by the water there. All right, Daniel. Well, you folks had a close call. Never expected right, to see Indians don't... this close to the settlement. You two all right? Yeah, yeah, we're all right. Maybelle, honey, don't cry. Shawnee, where'd they jump you? Uh, back, back, back at the salt licks. We, we stopped to eat, and I made a fire. That's kind of hanging out at a trouble sign in Indian country, especially when you're traveling alone. Where are you folks headed? Right here, I guess. This is the Boone party, isn't it? This is it, all right. Daniel Boone's the name. What's yours? Yancey, Mr. Boone. Bud Yancey. And this is Miss Maybell, my wife. <laughs> Mrs. Yancey, that is. Howdy, Bud. Glad to know you. You too, Maybell. Uh, Mrs. Yancey, that is. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been married long enough to get used to the handle, have you, ma'am? No, sir. In fact, We've we... We've been married almost three days now. Three days, well, I think it's safe now if you two old married folks would like to climb down. Well, now that you caught up with us, do you mind telling us why? We want to go to Kentucky with you, Mr. Boone. Don't we, Maybelle? Oh, yes, we do. Please take us with you, Mr. Boone. Kentucky, eh? I might have said no to your husband, Miss Yancey, but not to anybody as pretty as you. You can come along and welcome, providing you got plenty of supplies. We have, sir, and we won't be no bother. Good. Just pull your wagon around that circle there. You're headed for Kane Tuck. Yes, sir. Everything's gonna be all right. 
Give me a hand with the horses, James. We're going to make camp. Yes, Pa. Who are those poor dears, Daniel? A young married couple. The bride's almost as pretty as you. What's a bride, Ma? A bride? Oh, she's a young, newly married woman. How did she get to be a young, newly married woman? Well, she meets up with some nice young man who catches her eye, and he sweet talks her. Like Pa? Yes, Israel. Like your Pa. Well, I better turn in if I'm going to stand next to watch. Good night, men. Before you go, Daniel, um, I'd like to hear some more about that grass and cane talk. Now, is it honest to goodness blue? Or is that just one more of your darn stories? Why, Doc, I ain't telling a story. Why, that grass out there is so blue, it's like the reflection of a, of a clean winter sky in a pool of deep water. It stands waist high. And when that wind leans on it, that sea of grass is like rippling waves chasing each other as far as the eye can see. Why, Doc, I've sometimes wished there was a horse, just so as I could get my belly full of that grass. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night, Donald. Good night, Jemima. You all said your prayers? Yes, yes Dad. Pa. Yes, Pa. <laughs> Good night, Israel. Good night, Israel. Well, what's the matter with you, boy? If I'm big enough to tote a rifle, I'm big enough not to be kissed. I guess you got a point there. Good night. First signs of a boy growing up. When he don't want his old man to kiss him good night. I swear it seems only yesterday. Daniel. Yes, Rebecca? Do you see what I see? Depends on where you're looking. Over there. I see Bud Yancey crawling into his blankets like I ought to be doing. But where? Under his wagon. Exactly. That's my point. They've only been married three days. Well, it's a free country. A man can sleep under his wagon if he wants to. Well, can't he? Well, you didn't when we'd only been married for three days. Yeah, well, maybe he likes fresh air. No. There's something wrong. I've been watching that young couple. She cries every time he looks at her. First thing in the morning, I'll tell him not to look at her. Now, will you please go to bed? Do you think that I can go to sleep knowing that that poor girl over there is crying her heart out because of a silly lover's quarrel? So now they've quarreled. I suppose the next thing you'll tell me is it's Bud's fault. Well, of course you don't think she's crying for no reason at all, do you? I give up. Good night. Daniel. Please. They're so young and terribly frightened. Have a talk with Bud. Tell him to admit he's wrong and make up with me, Bill. Me? I ain't his old man. Oh, please, Daniel. They'll be so grateful to you, they'll probably make you godfather when their children are born. Will you go to bed if I do? Yes. All right, get the arnica bottle ready. I feel a punch in the nose coming on. Oh. Hello, Mr. Boone. You wasn't sleeping, was you, bud? Oh, I ain't sleepy. Me neither. Well, I figured I'd come over and talk a spell. Glad you did. It's hard to sleep when you got things on your mind. It sure is. Well, you got things on your mind, too? Plenty. I figured as much. You did? Yep. Maybell? How'd you know? A woman's usually at the bottom of a man's troubles. That's the truth. Silly, though, to let a little lover's quarrel spoil a honeymoon. Look at... It ain't just that, Mr. Boone. All you gotta do is tell Maybell you're sorry. Your troubles are over. Sorry for what? Whatever you done. I didn't do nothing alone. We was both to blame. What difference does that make? 
Tell Maybelle you're sorry and crawl back in your warm bed. Now, come on, let's get it over. It won't work. Come on now, bud, let's get this thing over with. Come on, Mr. Booth. You don't understand. Oh, sure I do. Now, listen, you just listen to your old Uncle Dan'l. He'll show you how to make a woman think she's won a victory. <laughs> you just go on in there and you say, Maybelle, dear, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Kiss her and we'll all get some sleep. It won't work. Oh, I... listen, well, now, go on. Come on. Go ahead. Oh, now, bud, you might as well break the ice now. You got a lot of years ahead of you. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. Mr. Boone, what is the meaning of this? Oh, come now, Maybelle. Your modesty's very becoming. But there's no need to act so hoity-toity with your husband here. He's... My husband? Mr. Boone, you don't know what you're saying. Why, I sure do. And I must say, this is no way for a young married couple to act. <sighs> now, why don't you two kids kiss and make up? By morning, your problems will all be forgotten. Mr. Boone, this man is not my husband. What was that? I said, Bud is not my husband. Then whose husband are you? Nobody, sir. I ain't married. Ain't married? How do you suppose I got that impression? I, I told you so, and I'm sorry. We were afraid that you wouldn't let us come with you if we didn't say we were married. We wanted to get married, but her folks didn't approve. Me, that is. I'm beginning to understand why. Well, what do we do, Mr. Boone? Well, there's one thing, sure. You can't go on like this posing as man and wife. It wouldn't be right. Not to mention you catching pneumonia from sleeping on the ground. Then help us get married, Mr. Boone. Please? All right. I'll do what I can, but I don't promise. Meantime, you sleep under the wagon. Yes, sir. your godfather when the children are born. Hogwash. You know them kids ain't even married? They're not. Well, I told you something was wrong. Well, what are you going to do about it? There you go again. What am I going to do about it? Well, the answer is nothing. At least till we get to Captain Gass's trading post tomorrow night. Then I'll put it before meat and let the folks decide. Now, good night. Yes, Rebecca. She'd make a lovely bride in my wedding dress. Not half as lovely as you, Miss Boone. serious part of this occasion over with so we can get down to the fun part. Amen to that, Daniel. Come on now. Come right around here, Maybell. All right, son, you skedaddle. This is for the grown-ups. According to our Quaker custom, Bud and Maybell here have declared their intentions to wed. So, if there are no objections, we'll get on with it. It's been so long since me and Rebecca has hitched, I, I kind of forget. I think it starts out by holding hands. Good. Like I said, I don't remember the exact words, but I'll try to think of some it'll do. The way I got it figured, it's, it's not so much what you say, but 
how you say it and whether you mean it or not. You two know what getting married means? It means a lot more than just hugging and kissing in the moonlight, and making love and sharing the same roof. It means doing for each other, even when there ain't much to do with. And it means watching out for one another through sickness and hard times as well as good ones. And caring what happens to each other, even if there's a mountain in between. It means knowing as a helping hand to reach out for in the dark. It means walking through the woods alone, yet feeling the other's presence right by your side. And it means, come heaven or high water, nothing under the sun is going to make you forget your vows that you've taken here tonight. All right, bud, you say yours. presence of God in this assembly, I take Maybelle Custis to be my lawful wife, promising to be a faithful husband to her until death do us part. Now you, Maybelle. In the presence of God and before you, his people, I take Bud Yancey to be my lawful husband promising to be a loving and faithful wife until death do us part. Good. Now you're taking your vows according to our customs. So now I pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Before somebody else gets the notion. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I guess it was the wrong man. You kiss her, bud. <laughs> All right, Captain, let's have some lively music. Grab your partners for the first dance. Here we go. Come on, honey, let's show them how. Oh, no, not you, too. Maybelle's got a right to cry. I kissed her. What you said about being together even with a mountain in between, that made me very happy. What's the matter, you boy? I was promised all the cake I could eat if I kept the bugs off of it. Oh, well then you just keep your watch, soldier, while I dance with this fair lady. May I? Yes.
drop. <laughs> uh, uh, Time to end the party, then. So soon? What's the matter? You getting old? My age has nothing to do with them I'm thinking of. Huh? Oh. Oh, I forgot it was their wedding we were celebrating. All right, folks. Better get some sleep. We pull out first thing in the morning. And, Bud, in case I didn't tell you, you don't have to sleep under the wagon tonight. <laughs> uh, me and Haybell, we should thank you all kindly. <laughs> Good night. Doc, you better take first watch at the north end of the clearing. Watch, Dan, watch, Dan. You heard the captain? Everything's peaceful. That's why I aim to get. Mm-hmm. Just a precaution. Bart, you better take the corral. Keep your eye on the livestock. Right, now. Hey, uh, what do you say we shivery the newlyweds, huh? That's hey, a good idea. Yeah, Everybody get something to make noise with. Have fun. Hey, yeah. noise you want, I'll bring my kids. <laughs> Captain, bust away.
the cam. Let him see you. I can't leave you, Bud. I love you. I love you, too. That, that's why I want you to go. It's our only chance. Go on. Everything's peaceful, all right. I'm sorry, but... Don't waste words. Maybelle's been shot. Daniel! James is gone. Gone? The Indians carried him off. There! I leave at once. Daniel, I'll fix a couple of packs and go with you. Boom! You can't leave us and go chasing Indians. My son's been stolen, Sarah. What do you expect me to do? There's too many of them, Daniel. You need help. No, I'll be better off alone. You just stay here. Take care of the folks. Now, don't worry, honey. I'll find him. Snuck that attack this morning. They don't want their chief to know that they broke the peace. That big fellow in the creek? The one with the headpiece? Ah! Old friend Crowfeather. That's him, all right. He's meaner than a she bear at cub and time. It won't do James no good if he finds out the boy's my son. Thanks, boy. You cannot get away. now, Daniel. First sign of danger and they're likely to kill a boy straight off. Let's not crowd them. They're heading straight for their village, and I know how to get there. Go say your peace.
We did not start the fight. We only defended hey, ourselves. Hey, Captain Gas, the trainer. He brings sweets. What kind of sweets have you got? No sweets this time, little blackbird. This is strictly business. Captain Gas! Now just take it easy, son. How do you do, Chief Blackfish? How do you do, Captain Gas? You do not bring sweets or merchandise for trade. What brings you so far from your post? A little matter of a broken treaty. Your braves had on war paint this morning, Blackfish. They attacked a party of settlers camped at my station. They stole guns and saddles and, and that boy yonder. We want them back. Is this true? We had a right to attack. You yourself commanded the Long Knife Boone to stay out of Kentucky. So it was the White Hunter Long Knife Boone you attacked? Yes. He came back in defiance of your orders. This is Boone's son? That's Boone's boy, all right. I did not know that. But it makes the prize more valuable. Dan'll ain't have to sit around long waiting to get him back, neither. Tell me, Captain Gass, what will these settlers do when they reach Kentuck? Farm, I suppose. Plant crops, hunt and trap. You see, my chief, it is a good thing I do. Now you can force the long night boom to go back. Or forfeit his son. Crow Feather's mind is full of cunning. Yet he speaks some truth. If Boone goes on, others will follow. And this land will no longer belong to us. He must turn and go back. Then that's your answer? Yes. I must have the word of Long Knife Boone that he will go back and take the settlers with him. And I promise to deliver his son safely. And what if he don't? He belongs to Crowfeather. To adopt, to sell, to do with as he pleases. It is tribal law. I'll deliver your message. It's up to Dan. Don't you fret yourself, son. Your pappy ain't one to give up easy. Well, tell him to hurry. <laughs> If it was just me and Rebecca and the kids, I wouldn't hesitate. I'd turn back. But it's the other folks I'm thinking about, folks like the Watkins. They've sold their farms, they've given up everything to settle in Kane Tuck. They got no place to go back to. Well, that's all well and good, Daniel, but if you aim to see that boy of yours again, why, well, you better act quick like. I don't trust that crow feather. Mm, neither do I. I guess I don't have a choice. Tell Blackfish we turn back. Why, that's Crowfeather's boy, Little Blackbird. He's one of my best sweets customers. You don't say. He won't be hurt. He trusts you. Don't you be afraid, little blackbird. We mean you no harm. What you got in mind, Daniel? An eye for an eye and a son for a son. You mean to make a deal with Crowfeather? A trade, even Stephen. Now, if I signal with a rifle shot, you let the boy go and you wait for me. Good luck. <laughs> much safer to send Captain Gass with the answer. He comes crawling, begging for the life of his son. I come walking, Crowfeather. 
It's you who crawls through the grass at break of day to attack sleep when women and children. Enough! He has come to parley. You will honor my word that no harm will befall him. Have you come to a decision, Boone? Well, I come to make a deal with Crowfeather like I did once before. You were lucky last time. This time we'll fight with knives. Now hold on, Crowfeather. I didn't mean a match with you, I said a deal. You are afraid. Well, it isn't that exactly. It's just that it goes against my religion to kill a man when there isn't no need for it. And in this case, there isn't. You see, uh, I'm holding as many cards as you are. Huh! I have your son. What do you have, Boone? Your son. What kind of a lie is this, Boone? This is another one of your tricks. It's no trick. I got him. And I want to swap for my son. Where is he? Has no one seen little Blackbird? Woman? He has not been seen since he left to hunt. How do I know you tell the truth? You give me your word that my boy can leave this camp safely. And I'll signal for your son to be released. I give my word. That isn't enough. Chief Blackfish must give his also. I give you my word, Boone. As soon as Crowfeather's son returns to this village, you may leave with your son. That's good enough for me, Chief. You can go now, little blackbird. Fly away home fast. <laughs> you have kept your word, Boone. I will keep mine. Release the boy. Pa! Easy, boy. Where's your gun? He's got it. We'll be leaving now, Chief. Do I have your word we go safely? I promise you safety back to the captain's trading post. If you go back to Caroline, all will be well. If you choose to go on, I cannot answer for your safety. That's a fair answer. Good day to you, Chief. Shatawa. Goodbye, little blackbird. Ouch! Ouch! Oh, ow! What's the matter, son? Your feet hurt? I cut him on rocks, trying to run away. Oh. You stood up to him real good. I was proud. Shut the way the boy calls you. What does that mean? Little warrior. They were gonna call me that after they adopted me. That's a good name for you. Well, climb aboard, Shut the way. We'll give you a feet a rest. He and how me and James here is gonna be kind of traveling slow for the next couple of days. Why don't you scoot on back to the station, Captain? Sort of relieve folks' worry. I don't suppose Rebecca will be interested, but I might mention it in passing that you're both safe. I'll leave my bedroll with the both of you. I won't be needing it. All right. You take good care of your paw, son. <laughs> Bye, Daniel. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.
Drop the gun, Long Knife. And I will give you a match. I don't want to kill you, Crowfeather, but I will if you force me. One of us must die, Long Knife. Shoot, or I will kill you. Try again. I'm taking you back to Blackfish. Is the gun loaded? Uh-huh. Let this be a lesson to you, boy. Don't ever forget to load your gun. A lesson to me, Pa? Well, uh, a lesson to both of us. On your feet. Come on. You wait for me up at camp. Chief Blackfish speaks with crooked tongue. He speaks of peace and friendship. He gives his word that no harm will come to us, and then he sends Crowfeather to do his killing under cover of darkness. I did not send this man. He acted on his own. I promise you, Boone, he will be punished for bringing dishonor upon us. Let there be no mistrust between your people and mine, Boone. 
Let us pledge the peace anew. Go back and all will be well. I can't shake with you, Chief. Because I'm not going back. There's a big new land out there called Cane Tuck. It's big enough for you and me and a million others to live on in peace. If you want it that way. Rebecca! Rebecca! It's Daniel! Oh, James. You, you look like an Indian. I am an Indian, almost. My name's Shadowa. Good <laughs> warrior. Glad to see you back, Daniel. We're sorry for what we said. When Gas told us you and the boy were all right, we started to pack and ready to leave. How's Maybell, bud? She's getting along fine. Doc got the bullet down. Well, good. Yes, sir, that's quite an experiment, Daniel. I might even practice on some more humans. Might help me if I have to doctor a cow. <laughs> You and Maybell going with us? We can't turn back now, Mr. Boone. Well, our future lies in Cane Tuck, same as yours. That's the spirit. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get rolling. <laughs> Come all you fine brave neighbors who have a mind to go To settle in Kentucky and chase the buffalo In some far distant country your fortune there to grow We lay us down upon the banks of the blessed Ohio Although his life depended a lot on every handmade bullet he shot The one thing he never learned was this He never learned how to miss He never learned how to miss He never learned how to miss I guess no man'll ever be Dan'l I guess no man'll ever be Dan'l Ever be Dan'l Boone 